Now for more insight, let's cross live to Mr. Chu Chang in Beijing. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Chu. So let's start with uh, President Xi Jinping's remarks. He stressed a need to enhance the guarantee ability of land elements to ensure high quality development of regions have competitive strengths. Help us better understand this. Well, uh, we have a say that uh, the land is the mother of all wealth, and also we have to understand land is the mother of survival. So China do not have the privilege and the luxury, you know, to have enough land for uh, 1.4 billion of population. Actually, we'll be using 9% of the uh, farmable land of the whole world to feed uh, more than one-fifth of the world population. So actually, you can see the conflict and the pressure in here in America, they have uh, probably about 300 million people, but they have very large ranches and the farmable land, like in Tennessee, Wisconsin, and Alabama. But in China, we do not have the condition. Most of the situation in China is that we have, you know, very big province uh, in the regard of the population, like Henan, like Jiangsu, like Zhejiang, and Sichuan, and Guangzhou. So on one hand, they have to develop uh, industry, the commerce, and trade. But on the other hand, they have to make sure they have enough land to feed all these people to develop the agriculture industry. It's like uh, in the city like New York or Los Angeles. You On one hand, you have to develop the uh, Tesla factory. But on the other hand, you have to put a very large ranch in the city as well. So I think the conflict between you know this population and also the uh, farmable land is very acute. So what China wants to do right now is to guarantee the food security and supply of its own country, to feed people, to make sure that everybody can safely enjoy their food. But also, on the other hand, we have to raise people's living standard by developing you know, trade, uh, commerce, uh, science and technology, and an industry. So what we can do to solve this problem is to use high-tech, green transition, and also the more efficient use of the land and administration of the land to you know, the better use and to utilize these resources that we have, and we have already seen many successful examples in China right now, and we're heading towards the right direction. Now, having said, we noticed that this crucial meeting on Monday adopted guidelines regarding land administration system reform, promoting the overall green transition of China's economic and social development. Uh, how significant is this move? Well. As I just mentioned, uh, green transition, high quality development, and also the uh, high, if, high efficient use of the land actually been bumped to each other. You know, a green transition and uh, high, develop, high quality development is the uh, target of our use of the land, but also is the answer to the better use of the land as well. Uh, for example, you know, China is the big you know, manufacturing power. Everybody knows China used to have a very large, every a very you know extensive kind of industry we call a big and dummy kind of industry you know they use a lot of the land and they have lots of the pollutions and emissions so for example i uh, in uh, before we have a very huge in the compressors for the metal factory and the, usually one machine will weigh more than dozens of tons so the result is that you have only to you know put this machine on the ground which means the more machine you use the bigger factory you will have to build and the more land you have to consume and little and less land you will be used on the farming and agriculture. But currently, if you see China's you know, uh, transition in the economic structure as well as the upgrading of the technology, we see China's heading towards more scientific oriented development in manufacturing. So right now I've been visiting several of the high-tech you know, metallic factories. They've been using the 3D printers of the metals so if you walk into the factory, everything is not spreading out in a horizontal way, but more built in the you know, vertical way. You use very little machine tied in a lab like building four, like commercial buildings, and then you can build very good you know, parts of the metals. So the way of the technology change actually changed the way we use land. Another uh, example happened in the Chinese province of the Inner Mongolia and the Xinjiang. We used to build very large solar farm in those provinces, consume lots of lots of land. But one day we find out, what, well, we can probably elevate the solar panel a little bit higher, and those solar panel can actually prevent the evaporation of this land. So we see grass start to grow under the solar panel, and then people start to herd the ships. So you see in this one solar farm, 
on one hand, you can generate the solar power, generate electricity, but on the other hand, you can utilize the land to you know, generate the, the sheep product, the meat. So I think this is another good example to show actually green transition and high-tech development is the only answer and the best answer to the conflict between in the development uh, of the economy as well as the shortage of the land supply. And this is going to be the future of Chinese way of using land. Well, Mr. Chu, since, since you mentioned high tech, let's take a look at the macro picture on this. President Xi Jinping also called for efforts to accelerate the building of basic systems for comprehensive innovation. What kind of uh, basic systems is he referring to? Well, I think the basic systems of innovation means that all the fundamental conditions that we support you know, a country's you know, innovation practice. This innovation is actually a very comprehensive and also very complicated, you know, practice of human society. It requires, you know, talents, education, investment, and also financial system, and also the basic industrial, you know, support. For example, you have all kinds of processing capabilities, industrial and manufacturing capability to support the scientists and the innovators to build the things out. So I think there are several pieces in here. I think the number one key is we really need to pay attention to the role of the enterprises. Well, let's take a look at the uh, in past 40 years all over the world. The most important fundamental change and breakthrough of technology are basically coming out of the enterprises. So for example, 3G, mobile internet, 5G, high-speed internet, EV, and also AI, and et cetera. The enterprises will be the chief role to make this change because they are on the first tier, on the first line of the market. They are the, the first line practitioners. They understand the market. They understand you know, uh, the cost to the benefit ratio. So I think uh, we need to really support them. This is very important. And also, uh, academic institutions also need to be elevated in the role of the fundamental and the theoretical researches because we still need this fundamental change and the improvement in the theoretical studies to make sure that we can jump and leap forward to another high in science and technology findings. And also, let have to mention about the financial uh, you know, market. In America, the uh, American market are doing very well in this regard. They have enough PE. They have annual fund, the seed fund to support a full dimension, a holistic you know, ecology and investment to the startups to the innovators. And this can be a very important role to be complementary to only the government's uh, you know, support and investment. I think China has already doing very well in the education system, in the government funding system. But what we can do next is to pay more attention to the enterprises, especially to the SMEs, to the private sectors, as well as to nurture more of the market-oriented funding systems, the financial system, to support further innovation.